Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I was doing some digging in my hard drives and I found some old footage of some old projects and I figured uh, this is probably something that a lot of you would be interested in seeing. So, for the next... Hey, don't be so loud. Huh? Don't be so loud. 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 Don't be so
And now we're going to try to learn about that. Um, so um, nothing really else. I did go up to a really high frequency. At, at some point, you get to such a high frequency that the transistors are basically just on all the time. And the power is dumped straight through and they get super hot and they don't like those fast switching speeds. So uh, below 50 kilohertz, that box will go up to 100 kilohertz. I remember making the modification a long time ago and I realized I just didn't have the settings right on the box. So I can go up to 100 kilohertz and I did do that in the higher frequencies. You can see I got these fans strapped on here. Um, I was just pulsing the system, not rotating anything. So the frequency, you know, to even get to 750 kilohertz, right, 7,500 7, kilohertz, even to get there you need something like 4,500 RPM. I mean, 450,000 RPM. So this is 10 mag, uh, 20 magnets on the rotor, so each pulse is a thing, you know, to get the thing to spin. So that's out of the question at those high frequencies. Um, but the off time versus the on time is different, so it pulses it as fast as the, as the magnet passes it, right? That's how long the pulse stays on. So the faster you spin it, the higher the frequency, but what I think I need to do is go higher voltage. I knew that from the beginning, but I wanted to learn my way through this. I wanted to, to show my way through this and not go at it with a, a biased opinion, right? Um, so that's what I did. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up to the high voltage. Um, I don't know if this battery pack helps. I'll have to do some other tests with other ideas with that, but I just don't know. I just threw it on there. I probably shouldn't have. I should have not done that to start with, but I did, and that's what I got. I don't really know. <laughs> I was hoping I could run the system for like a week. I really only ran it for about two days because that one battery went negative. It kind of, um, kind of screwed up my rotation. So, one of the things I really do want to try though is do three to one, and I'll, I'll, I'll basically connect that big bank together. Try to charge these up normal two battery system, right, run in a charge, and that's it. Because those big batteries should charge these little batteries. Um, no problem, should. But I don't know until I do it. So that's where we're at. Um, I just got to make this video to document my thoughts. Like I said, that very strange pulse has to come with high current, and high voltage uh, is going to help with that high current. And, you know, above like literally, above like 20 amps, at uh, 24 volt is when I start seeing that phenomenon and that many amps out of these little batteries is quite a lot continuously uh, for the whole time you know these things say I'm supposed to be it says initial current 10.5 amps max so I did look online you can you can you can dump a way more than that initially but that's probably like the constant even though it says initial it's more like the constant. So these over here are um, initial current less than 30 amps. So I'll be able to dump my my 25 to 30 amps into the system. Um, I don't know if I showed you these connectors, but I got a bag of Anderson connectors so that I can reconfigure the batteries. And I'm waiting on some other connectors to make the new terminals for the big batteries. They should be here today. That's my documentation for this one, guys. Um, I got real, real no interesting, um, but I still have good feelings about this system. But over the last four or five days, I think I've realized that there's much, much, much better ways to do it. And so if this demonstrates the principle, then how it does it is sort of hidden. It's sort of hidden within the system. And it's very difficult to understand. And if at higher voltages, higher currents, it shows what I show, then I'll, I'll document that a little better. Uh, for now, uh, there is a, it's a lot of work for you guys to watch this whole day, but there is a playlist of every live video stream of this during the day, and it is public. You can watch it. So some of the, some of the videos on RWG Research Live, when I do a live feed, it automatically sets it to um, unlisted. So if you grab the link while you're watching the live feed, you can go back and watch it. But if you miss it, 
then I put those in playlists so they're organized because it's chaos otherwise. So that's how you access them. Let's look at the playlists. All right, peace and love. God bless. Bye-bye. All right, boys and girls. So I still have five Anderson connectors left. But this is enough to do one eight bank of batteries. And let me tell you, that was a lot. Oh man, one of these is wrong. That's going to throw the whole entire thing off. And it won't work ever again if I don't put it on the same way. Come on guys, you got to be more particular about your things, right? Follow instructions. Anyway, yeah, that's a lot of wires to be cutting, crimping, and uh, heat shrinking, and installing. That is a lot. So I got a black jumper, I got a red jumper. These longer cables are for tying the motor together. And the fun thing is, is if I put all these together on just the one bank, that one, then each terminal gets two wires because sometimes they're parallel, sometimes they're series. So depending on the configuration, depends on what you do. And then I'm just going to connect them together, not put like a jumper or something in there. Um, actually, hmm, I thought I made up. Oh, that's these right here. Yeah, these jumpers here. Okay. So if I wanted to do the other bank, I'm going to have to crimp a lot more wires, but I'm probably only going to do this to one bank because I just want to be able to switch around easily one bank and I don't have enough batteries to do both the banks like that so anyway I thought I'd document this madness before I actually installed them on the batteries that is crazy 180 amp connectors I'm really just concerned about the resistor not the power level and if you're curious these guys are PP 180 Red and black. Anderson's, man. Good, good, expensive, but high quality stuff.